Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode 186 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I'd like to cover questions that I got from my previous podcast on the liver detox skin rash connection. I appreciate everyone who submitted these questions because the way that we've been conditioned to think about liver detox and actually doing a detox isn't entirely accurate. The reality is that liver detox isn't black and white. It's not some fish filter that needs to be cleaned and wrung out. The process of detoxification is way more complicated than just getting toxins out of your body. So if you've been under that impression, because that's how it's been explained in the past, it's time to put aside that inaccurate concept. This episode is part two of the initial liver detox skin rash connection from episode 177. If you missed that episode, or you don't know that there are three distinct phases of liver detox and what they're all about, go check out that episode first before diving into this one. My goal here is to answer your questions so that you can make better, more educated decisions about your next steps to support your skin and health. Question number one, how do you know if you need a liver detox? This might surprise you, but I rarely ever recommend liver detoxes. For most people with chronic skin issues, liver detoxes aren't necessary and sometimes can make things worse. Those with psoriasis, though, who demonstrate through testing elevated liver enzymes such that their doctor is concerned or diagnoses them with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are an exception. They could benefit from doing a liver detox after addressing some of the other hidden root cause issues such as gut microbiome imbalances that are driving the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease forward in the first place. So if you're listening to The Healthy Skin Show, your first step is to support your phase two liver detox pathways. So you might say, well, Jen, how do you support phase two detox? Well, you have to support it with specific nutrients that those pathways require that often your body does not make. It isn't accomplished by taking a detox supplement or milk thistle or eating a ridiculous number of green apples per day, nor does it require binders of any sort. These pathways need nourishment, not detox supplements to clean your liver. Phase two pathways have the capacity to do what you think those detox products are doing, but because of a heavy load and potential low nutrient availability, they're struggling to keep up. So my simple answer here still stands from all the cases I've reviewed. If you have some sort of chronic skin rash concern like eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, hives, dandruff, etc., everything we talk about here on the Healthy Skin Show, you need to support phase two pathways so they can do their thing. Question number two, how do you measure liver detox? Liver detoxification isn't so simple to measure. I look at the biochemistry of it all and have identified certain patterns from my clinical experience with labs and working with clients. This has made it easier and less expensive for everyone in this community to not necessarily have to spend money on testing. Since we know that the glycine pathway requires both glycine and B6, your liver enzymes on a comprehensive metabolic panel and even the homocysteine marker, if your doctor is willing to run it, can provide insight into whether or not you need more B6. There's really no harm in adding in extra glycine, which is why I commonly make this suggestion. It's imperative to support the glycine pathway of phase two liver detox for those with chronic skin issues. Remember, this pathway can't efficiently run and process toxins if supplies of glycine and B6 are low. So a backlog of toxins that head down this pathway will require higher intakes of these two nutrients for a period of time to really be determined mostly by your practitioner because you don't want to over supplement with B6, for example. And you can certainly measure other phase two liver detox pathways thanks to urinary organic acid testing, but it may not be within your budget. And frankly, it isn't always necessary. Question three, how long do you support your liver for? 
This is a great question and not asked often enough. Most people assume that one bottle of whatever it is they decide to do will be enough. Unfortunately, that's not the case. It's crucial to know that by the time you're dealing with chronic issues, you've likely got quite a backlog of items that your phase two liver detox pathway has to deal with. So in the beginning, you're refilling those nutrient wells in order to address that backlog. Beyond that point, you still have to support these pathways while working through your root causes because dealing with them can cause an increase of waste products as well. My clients are oftentimes supporting their phase two liver detox pathways for anywhere from 75 to 100% of the time that we're working together, either with glycine and B6 and even possibly P2 detox balance, which is a completely herb-free formula for those who are sensitive to them and have a lot of issues with allergies. This isn't a short-term issue that you just check off your list. It's a crucial piece that must be ongoing until you're starting to really see symptoms resolve. Question number four, when do you take liver detox support? Typically, I recommend that clients take it two times per day in the beginning. That's in the morning with breakfast and in the late afternoon or at dinner. With time and as rashes begin to resolve, you should be able to reduce this to once a day without causing any flare-ups. Now, if you're really sensitive to supplements where certain things will disturb your sleep or make it very difficult for you to fall asleep, take the second round anywhere from 2 to 4 p.m. There isn't any caffeine or anything in phase two liver support nutrients. It's just that some people are more sensitive than others and need to make adjustments for their unique body. And lastly, I haven't found that it makes a difference at all, taking it with or without food. So do what's easiest for you so that you will be consistent. Now, I can't swallow pills, as many of you have heard me say on the show, so I actually empty out the P2 Detox Balance capsules into my morning protein shake so that I can get them in. And by the way, it does not alter the taste of the protein shake at all. Question number five, do castor oil packs help liver detox? While I have discussed the use of castor oil packs on the show, they cannot support phase two detox since there's no additional nutrients that you'll somehow get from doing these types of packs on the outside of your body. Castor oil packs can definitely be helpful for some, but again, the issue I'm talking about here is focused on specific nutrient depletions that your body is not capable of providing on its own because we just don't make those nutrients. We need to take them in from food that is appropriately digested and absorbed or through supplementation. Question number six, can I just get glycine from collagen? You can and will get glycine from collagen. I've often recommended it as a supplement to those who can tolerate it since not everyone can, especially those struggling with histamine overload issues. However, I have found that supplementing with glycine on its own to be more effective in my clinical practice. So I don't rely on collagen supplementation to provide enough glycine to really support phase two detox when someone's system is already pretty overloaded. Question number seven, does the detox I start with matter depending on what type of health and skin issues that I have? This is a great question, which I'd like to preface by stating that it's really common for clients in my practice to be dealing with a number of health issues beyond just their skin concerns. Some are struggling with eczema and celiac and fatigue. Others are dealing with psoriasis and thyroid problems and joint issues. I could literally put together an extensive list detailing the skin and health problem combos that each client has. So while I do think it's incredibly important to personalize your journey, this is one area where it doesn't matter in the way that you think it does. For all skin issues I've talked about here on the Healthy Skin Show, whether it's eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, dandruff, hives, tinea versicolor, etc., start here with supporting phase two detox. It's a fundamental step that is high priority to address from the get-go. And I have a great graphic over on the post for this episode that I highly encourage you to check out that will explain this very clearly to you. I'm not saying that your diagnoses don't matter. They do. 
but sometimes they can overcomplicate the road forward, especially when you're trying to figure it all out yourself. Yes, there can be tiny nuances between the path for you versus someone else, but I can tell you that at this point, I haven't deviated from the support phase two liver detox step in any case that I work on, even when the case is more gut focused without any skin issues whatsoever. That's how important this is. Question number eight, can liver detox cause a keto rash? At this time, it's not fully understood why some people develop an itchy rash on their skin not long after starting a keto style diet. For those of you unfamiliar with a keto diet, basically you increase fat intake and reduce carb intake such that your body begins to burn ketones instead of glucose as its primary fuel source. The best suggestion to get the rash to stop is actually to increase carb consumption and exit ketosis. This will most likely allow the rash to resolve on its own. And listen, if this happens to you, I don't think it means that you've failed, so don't think that at all. But consider the idea more so that keto might not be the best dietary approach for your body. Remember that you are unique, and if one way of eating doesn't work for you, there are other approaches out there that might be a better fit. Question number nine, best detox protocols. This episode is only about the way that I focus on supporting phase two liver detox. I've repeatedly shared my recommendations about glycine, vitamin B6, and P2 detox balance, which is focused on amino acids to support phase two detox without herbs and vitamins. I can only give general recommendations here since I don't know your case and you should run all new supplements past your practitioner or doctor working on your case first. So first let's talk about glycine. My recommendation is three grams two times a day, and it can be added to a bit of water and you just drink it. For vitamin B6, I typically recommend five to 10 milligrams taken in the morning. Now make sure to check all the other supplements that you are taking because it could be in something else and you don't wanna take more not knowing that you were already taking it in other things that are already in your regimen. And lastly, with the P2 detox balance, I recommend three capsules two times per day. Now, if you can tolerate cruciferous veggies, which is difficult for some with salicylate sensitivity, broccoli sprouts are also a great addition to your diet, but they're not gonna replace glycine, B6, or the P2 detox balance. They're just a great addition in general. Other detox methods like sweating, dry brushing, etc. Those things are helpful for supporting other drainage elimination pathways and moving the lymph around, but that's a totally different conversation. As I said in the beginning, if you need a refresher on the different phases of liver detox, go check out episode 177, which is part one of this conversation. And if you're interested in trying P2 Detox Balance that I use in my practice, you can head on over to quellshop.com and use the coupon code QUELL10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's QUELL10, Q-U-E-L-L-1-0 to get 10% off. This is one of my favorite products to keep Phase 2 Detox humming along. Now, all of the resources and links associated with this episode can be found at skinterrupt.com forward slash 186, including that graphic that I would love for you to come over and see that shows you the priority of which systems to deal with in a very particular order. And while you're at it, you can leave your questions and comments about this topic and everything I've covered in this episode there. I'm happy to answer them. And yes, 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 there will be a part three coming soon. And I invite you to share this episode with anyone you know who's considering doing a liver detox to try to fix their skin. That way they can make an educated decision about whether or not it's really a good idea to do that liver detox. Because you know what? I would hate to see them end up in a painful flare unnecessarily because he didn't know that sometimes that can be the result of doing some of these detoxes that are recommended out there for other conditions that might be great, but can oftentimes cause a problem for people with skin issues. Before you head off for your day, take a moment to rate and review the Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform, making sure to share what you love, what inspires you, or what gives you hope 
That way you can inspire somebody else to join us on this journey. And then hit the subscribe button so you can tune in each week for new research, tips, and inspiration. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.